Hi, this arrived uh, a couple of days ago. I, I was contacted by DRock, and they asked me to uh, review their what they call the small DRock small little DC voltmeter two wire. Uh, it is supposed to be a uh, panel mount, solar battery volt uh, voltage meter, etc. So we'll take a look at it. Um, not a lot of information here on the front except for a part number that, well, it looks like a part number, X -O X000 GETCXH. I don't know if that's the part number or what, but we'll give it a shot. We'll see what this thing is um, and take some measurements. I'm usually not w one for uh, unboxings, but let's uh, open this bad boy up and see what we get. All right. Little card, www.prodc2dc.com for uh, DC converters, looks like, and www.wnmeter.com. So, all right. Looks like a fairly, fairly typical meter. Standard three-digit. Oh, not going to take much to get into that circuit board, is it? We'll take a closer look at that, see if we spot anything interesting uh, down in there. It appears to be uh, powered by the device being measured, so the battery being measured is going to be providing the power. Uh, let's take a look. All right, here we have our meter hooked up to our power supply. It's rated to start at 3 volts up to 30. So we'll start it at 3 volts, and looks pretty good. At 3, it's measuring 301, so we're only off by a tenth of a volt. That seems, uh, seems pretty good. Uh, let's crank it up now. It is eating uh, almost 4 milliamps. So if you are using this on a uh, some sort of battery or powered or you know solar powered project, you'll definitely want to keep in mind the current consumption of any measuring devices you're hooking up to that. So if we increment by just a 0.1, yep, it increments by 0.1. Let's try it at uh, 0.01. So let's see what it does when I go to 301. It goes uh, back and forth, flipping back and forth there between 01 and 02. At 02, it's, so it's reading just about 0.01 high, so a hundredth of a volt high. And it only shows the hundredths digit here up through the, uh, up through 9.9 uh, .9 volts. All right, looks pretty good so far. Let's try 5 volts and see how she does. Dead on at 5 volts. And our current consumption has doubled, though, to 10. Now it's definitely a much brighter display. This would be uh, easy to read, uh, except for maybe in the brightest of sunshine. You're going to have no trouble reading that, I would think. 6 volts, sure enough, pretty accurate. We're up by, again, 0 0.01. Let's go up to 10, right at 10. And we're using 11 milliamps, so the current consumption has eased up uh, its growth uh, from 5 volts. Now that we're at the 10 volt range, uh, let's see what happens if we move around by a tenth of a volt. If we go up by a tenth, yep, seems to be pretty good, 10.2, 10.2, so looking pretty good there. What happens if we drop to 9.9? .9? All right, so we toggle uh, right back down into the extra hundreds digit. So what you see is, as we drop right across that line, the decimal point's going to be flipping back and forth. Your digits are going to be uh, maybe a little hard to read if you have something that is uh, oscillating a little bit. Your voltage is uh, wobbling a bit around the 10 volt line. But otherwise I think it'll work pretty well. So if we drop down to 9.98, nope. There we go. At 9.97, it uh, it dropped back down. So it looks like if you're at 9.98, which it reads is about a hundredth of a volt high, 9.9, .9, it's just it it's pulling it in as uh, rounding it as 10 volts. So that's not too bad. All right, let's go to uh, 20 volts and see what happens. 
right on the money. And they claim 30 volts, so let's wind it up. 25. And then up to 30, its maximum rating. And I won't push it over its maximum rating just yet. Let's do a little closer look and see how it, how it uh, looks inside before I do something to uh, destructively test it. Uh, current consumption at 30 volts is uh, 12, around 12 milliamps. It uh, seems to oscillate a little bit, uh, quite a little bit actually, depending upon the digits that are being displayed, of course. So that's accounting, going from a 29 or 30.0 to a 30.1 was uh, causing the current to fluctuate by a couple of milliamps, which is understandable with the extra segments. Okay, let's take a closer look in at it. All right, so we have the uh, meter out and checking out the back. We can see a small snap-on power connector here. Uh, I have looked at this chip under a uh, much more powerful microscope. There's, there are no markings on it. It doesn't appear to have a coating. It doesn't appear that the markings were ground off. Uh, there just, uh, just never were any markings. There could be markings on the underside. I don't know that I'll bother taking it all apart to check it all out. But it's a pretty straightforward layout. Uh, looks like we've got our drivers for, for uh, the LEDs. Uh, we can snap this apart. The um, circuit board is held in here by these little, uh, by a couple little uh, wings. There's just a small stub of PCB. Let's see if I can zoom out and get a shot of that. And the trick is to do this without, without breaking the plastic. Okay, it's one side, the other ought to just pop right up. There we go. So with it out of the case, we'll take another uh, close look at it and see if there's anything really interesting. Uh, we have our driver resistors here for the different segments. These are 220 ohm, along with a couple more in here. So that adds up to the uh, seven segments plus decimal point. Up here, we have a 7133H, and that is a high voltage um, linear regulator, I believe. That uh, handles up to, I think it said 30 volts, and that's what this regulator is capable of handling. And this looks like a diode. I didn't recognize uh, the number on it, but it, uh, with two of the legs of the SOT23 soldered together to that, I'm going to guess that this is just a block, some sort of protection diode. If we take a closer look here at this edge, if I can get it to focus a bit better, uh, this is actually two circuit boards sandwiched together. Uh, so it's thicker than, a little thicker than the usual. Um, so these are two slightly thinner boards maybe sandwiched together. Uh, no indication of whether there are any traces going through it, but I'd expect there probably are. Uh, and what that's done is it's mostly just provided, I think, a much stiffer uh, backboard. Um, and I touched it, that is a trimmer, so I may have knocked it out of cal, but there's a little trimmer on here to uh, calibrate it, I suppose. So if you get one and it's not reading exactly the way you'd like, probably can just give that uh, trimmer a little twist and get it, get the numbers coming up the way you want. So all in all, uh, handy little meter. I'll probably put this to use in a project. It's very bright. I like the green, bright green display. All right, so with it back together, um, what do we think? Well, it's pretty good, and it seems to be pretty well made. I looked at it closely under the microscope. There weren't any uh, cold solder joints. There weren't any uh, uh, places where the solder seemed to be missing. Uh, there is one particular pin down in here, which when you, um, if you look at it closely, it's not connected. It's intentionally not connected uh, on the display to the board. Everything seemed to reflow nicely. So I think it's uh, pretty well made, uh, especially you know, $8. Uh, hard to beat that for something that is uh, as accurate as claimed and uh, works over the, the uh, rated voltage.